I've talked about the move from Steam to Epic Games Store that Metro Exodus made in my last video, and it seems to me that ever since that video popped up criticizing the developers and publishers or whoever is responsible for this move, I cannot believe that there are even stupider news coming out from all of this. This is mostly not related to Metro, but it is related to Epic Games Store. I've talked about how Epic Games Store is a store lacking in so many features that it is absolutely not beneficial for the consumers to be in there. It is beneficial for the developers to be in the platform because of the great cut, but if the consumers aren't buying the game in that platform because it is lacking so many features, then what's even the point? There's no point in staying in a platform that gives you more cuts but also gives you less consumers at the same time. I don't even know what to say about this matter. I'm basically going on repeat. I do want to talk about that developer from 4A Games who said something along the lines of if all the PC players announce boycott at Metro, then the next Metro, if it does happen at all, will definitely not be on PC. It's just one developer, I know, but he said something so monumentally stupid. But you know what? That's fine. If Metro wants to go full console exclusive, I hope all of you guys enjoy the significantly lower sales and a bunch of really pissed off consumers that will not spend a dime on your games after you pull off all of this BS. In order for Epic Games to truly be something worthy as a Steam competitor, they need to have all the essential features that Steam has, like user reviews or regional pricing. But they launched the store at a state where it's not ready for the consumers to use. You can check out this convenient table provided by PC Gamer on the comparison between the two platforms. As you can see, even basic features like user reviews are not available yet. So again, what's even the point? The funniest part of all of this is that if we're talking about the lack of user reviews, there's a very good re- Okay, there isn't a very good reason, but there is a reason. According to Tim Sweeney, the founder of Epic Games, the reason behind the lack of reviews is so that they can cut down on review bombing. Their review system is currently using the Unreal Engine Marketplace and letting the devs to opt in. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, they prevented the users from reviewing the games just to make sure that the product isn't being review bombed. Now, don't get me wrong, there are cases where review bombing is pretty absurd. Just recently, review bombing the last two Metro games because of Metro Exodus is... Uh, Exodus from Steam to Epic Games Store, that is a really stupid move. The first two Metro games are some of the best first-person shooters out there, and I highly recommend them. Review bombing these games because of something that the games didn't do is really stupid, guys. But just because some people abuse the review system doesn't mean that they're wrong or that they don't have good points. Review bombing products can also highlight a significant issue within the game. Ace Combat 7 on PC was also review bombed on Steam because there's no direct input support for the HOTAs or the flying sticks that people use. Unfortunately, a lot of the HOTAs and flying sticks still use direct input, which means that it's not going to work out of the box with Ace Combat 7 using X input and DS4. Thankfully, it can be fixed by using Steam's controller input support or use a third-party direct input to X input converter like the Xbox 360 CE. It is absolutely confirmed that it works. Somebody already did it. I will probably make a video on this in how to map the flying sticks in the future, but I have made a video in how to map a cheap five dollar direct input controller to the Xbox 360 CE. Just replace the controller mapping with the joystick mapping. Also, follow this guide for additional instructions. I'll link to them down below. But still, it is an arcade flight sim game that doesn't natively support HOTAs and flight sticks out of the box, and you have to either tweak it through software tinkering or buy the HOTAs that support X input or direct input, like this one for the PS4, which is around 200 bucks, and it's just absurd. Bandai Namco apparently says that this is a bug and they're going to work their way to fix it, which is nice. But we PC gamers already have a workaround and it does provide quite a lot more features. So this might better be one hell of a bug fix. Now, I've played Ace Combat 7 on PC using a DualShock 4, and 4 to 5 missions in, I thought it was a fantastic game, especially on PC. The game runs pretty damn well on my GTX 1050 laptop. It's hovering around 50 to 60 FPS at 1080p in high settings, which is great considering that my GPU is very entry level and I'm running it on a laptop. The game looks absolutely gorgeous and it runs pretty damn well. So in all honesty, it's a good PC port. It's just that you need to have a controller, preferably with an X input support, and this is a really glaring issue that the developers need to address. I can understand why so many people are frustrated, but thankfully, there are other reviews beyond the negative ones that tell me that the game runs pretty damn well and it's a good PC port, which is why I ended up buying the game because I use a controller and this is not an issue that 
affects me personally. I wouldn't know about the game's glaring issues and also the game's PC port quality if I didn't read people's reviews. If the average users see a review bombing scenario happening, they always scroll down into the bottom to see why people are review bombing it or why people are giving it a negative review in general. It might be for a legitimate reason, it might not be for a legitimate reason. The point is, people can find out why the game is getting negative reviews. They have more information to use to make a smart business decision. Review bombing or abusing the system in general is a problem and they might not entice consumers to buy your games. But unfortunately, the number of illegitimate cases of review bombings are very few and far between in comparison to review bombings with legitimate cases. Even the ones review bombing the last two Metro games have good arguments against the exclusivity deal. They just aired them in the wrong platform and blamed it on the two games that didn't really do anything. They're just published and developed by the same team. These review systems help the consumers to air their grievances towards these games or their platforms. If the developers want to remove them because they can be abused, then you're not giving the consumers enough trust. This is a move that basically says you can't air your opinion on this game and we're probably not going to listen to it or you can, but it's going to be through a very complicating process that the average consumers won't use. This is a move that distances the developers and the consumers more. The most baffling thing that I noticed is that when Tim was talking about the review system, he focused so much on the store being competitive while completely ignoring what makes the store alive to begin with. Here's what he has to say on a Reddit thread as a response to another user, and this is from a month ago. His response is just baffling. It's up to you guys to decide what's anti-consumer, but our aim with the Epic Game Store is to be very pro-competitive. In other words, to compete as a store and encourage healthy competition between stores. It's up to us to decide what's anti-consumer. He's practically saying, we don't care about what you think. Here's our goal for this store and we're going to reach for it. I'm sorry, but you cannot reach your goal if you don't have consumers. You cannot reach your goal if you are being anti-consumer. You cannot be competitive to Steam if you don't even have 5% of the features that Steam has, which will drive away consumers. And you don't want something like that to happen, do you? I understand that we need competition for Steam, but you're bringing a knife to a gunfight. Steam is already well equipped with the latest weapons, while you are still using slingshots. When lots of stores compete, the result is a combination of better prices for you, better deals for developers, and more investment in new content and innovation. These exclusives don't come to stores for free. They're a result of some combination of marketing commitments, development funding, or revenue guarantees. This all helps developers. Okay. In regards to better prices, yes, Epic Game Store sell Metro Exodus for $10 less. It's still pretty expensive to me or anybody who lives in a country that isn't prospering financially. The store still lacks a lot of features that make Steam really damn good. The game is probably gonna be pirated in about a month or possibly a day after launch, but hey, at least it's $10 less. <laughs> So you're giving us a slightly better price for the games in exchange of playing them in a bare-bones, featureless platform. Imagine a scenario where you buy the game for $50, which is still a hefty price even for the Americans. The game is buggy as hell, it doesn't run very well, and there are no features that let people to tell the game developers about it. Okay, there is, but it's not as easily accessible, and the average consumers who looked at the game at the store will not know about it. So people will buy the game because it's Metro and people love the previous two games, but then turns out that the game is buggy and there are no features so far in Epic Game Store that immediately let people know about the game being buggy. That is, unless if you're active in social media and you're following people who bought the game or you're active in the current news and by the time people who spread the news say them, it's already too late. People are already buying the game in droves. Now of course this scenario relies on Metro being released in a buggy state, but this isn't just about Metro. This can be any game. Ubisoft titles are notorious notoriously horrendous at launch, and they have the Division 2 on the Epic Game Store. You just wasted a bunch of money for buying a buggy game that you didn't know was buggy because the information isn't immediately available to you. That's the issue here. Information like that needs to be immediately available for the consumers, which is why you have reviews. They're easier to access compared to looking at the forums or news. Sure, this is an issue with other exclusive platforms like Origin, but 
actually, there's not much of a but. It's also an issue with Origin. But at the very least, Origin is an EA-centric platform, whereas Epic Games Store is supposed to host game publishers other than Epic Games. It's supposed to be more neutral. I don't usually have an issue with the lack of user reviews if I buy Logitech products directly from their website, but I do have an issue with it if I buy it from, say, Newegg or Amazon, more neutral stores. The reason why people call this move anti-consumer is because one, there's so much lack of faith being put into consumers, and two, crucial information like the game being buggy or unplayable will not be immediately known by the consumers. Of course consumers are going to abuse the system. Of course there will be cases of review bombs that are irresponsible and illogical. We are not perfect. We're going to do dumb things as well. There are times where we are not right, but if you remove the ability for 100% users to air their grievances because 10% of the users abuse the system, you're going to prevent 90% or more of legitimate consumer feedback to arrive to not just you, but other consumers as well. Do you see why people don't like your platform? Do you see why people say that it's equal to silencing criticisms? It helps the developers for sure, but developers need consumers, and you will drive away consumers from the developers if you make anti-consumer practices. This should be a very simple concept that I'm actually shocked that people are too dumb to realize it. Multiple stores are necessary for the health of an ecosystem. When there's only one, their natural tendency is to siphon off more and more of the revenue when they go to monopoly profits rather than creators. I agree, I don't want Steam to be a monopoly as well, but here's the thing, Steam is mostly good. It's not perfect, but it's mostly good. If you want to have a healthy ecosystem where one platform doesn't siphon off more and more of the revenue, then you need to have a platform that is good, not just for the developers, but the consumers as well. Again, you're bringing a knife to a gunfight. You might win at some, but you will significantly lose at others. All developers recognize this because their business are being crushed under the weight of these increasing store taxes. This is why devs have been super enthusiastic about the Epic Store. For users, I get that it's yet another launcher, and if you have Steam installed, you prefer to just use it, but if you want better games to be built in the future, then please recognize what good this store can do. We do Epic Games. We do understand why your platform is good for the developers. We just don't see how your platform is good for consumers. And developers need consumers to stay alive. Do you see the issue here? Do you have to make me to talk to you like a toddler? Steam takes 30% and Epic takes 12%. That's an 18% difference. And most devs make way less than an 18% profit margin. So this can be the difference between being able to fund a new game and going bankrupt. You want to talk about game developers going bankrupt? Let's talk about putting a game in a bare-bones, featureless platform that is very anti-consumer and doesn't put too much faith to the consumers for giving feedback, which will drive significantly less consumers into your platform, which will make game developers bankrupt. No consumers mean bankrupt developers. Get this idea on your heads. I just want game developers to be aware that the decision to move your game into the Epic Game Store isn't as black and white as you might think. You can either put your game in a platform that the gamers use and love for years, a platform that gamers from all over the world use to play their latest PC games, but you will get a significantly bigger cut. You will get profit, but the cuts will be bigger. Or, you put your game in a platform that gives you better cuts, but not a lot of consumers are willing to touch it with a 10-foot pole because it's bare bones, it's featureless, and for a lot of users around the world, it's more expensive and more difficult to use. It's not as black and white as a lot of you might think, isn't it? It doesn't sound like an immediately obvious choice now, isn't it? Because it isn't. Epic Game Store is selling a lot of game developers features that will benefit them, but what they didn't say is that they would not include features that will benefit the consumers, which game developers need. Say what you want about Steam getting the 30% cut, at least there are people who use it! Pretty much ever since then, a lot of the responses from Tim are dismissing the consumers. Using his Twitter account, Tim once again illustrates that he's completely missing the point. He dismisses the opinions of the consumers by saying, love us or hate us, we don't hate you Epic Game Store, we just find your features incredibly lacking for the average consumers to use. This is not about exclusives. I can see how exclusives are going to drive sales for the platform owners. This 
is about features. The PS4 has tons of great exclusives, but I don't see any reason to touch my PS4 when most of the games that I'm going to play are coming out on PC, and my PC provides similar if not better features compared to the PS4. Similarly, I don't see any reason for any consumers to use the Epic Game Store if the features are incredibly lacking. Just because they offer games that are not available in other platforms doesn't mean that the platform itself is good or that it's automatically worthy of purchase at least the Switch offers portability and many other features that the PC and the PS4 don't have. I have also said this in my last video that if you provide stores that are way more inconvenient compared to piracy, you will get piracy. That will happen and piracy can hurt developers. And the thing about piracy is that DRMs like Denovo are getting easier and easier to crack. It will take less than a year or even a month or even a day. There are recently released modern titles out there that are cracked in less than a month or even a week after their release. You can either implement an even stronger DRM which will hinder the consumers or don't implement a stronger DRM and get your game pirated. That or just publish your game in a platform that consumers actually use. Steam would cut 30% off your profits, but at least there are people who are buying your game worldwide. Again, worldwide. To conclude this video, I can understand the promising 88% cut, but don't think for one second that this issue is as obvious and clear-cut as you might think. It isn't. Think again.